What's up everyone? Today we're starting a brand new series with this girl right here. This is a 2012 Chevy Caprice PPV. Why the Chevy Caprice PPV? Well, I'll go through that in a little bit, but suffice to say, it's got four wheels, right? It's got an LS engine in it, and it could do this. Now you may be asking yourself, where's Lunar Outlaw? Here I am. Let me tell you a really cool feature of the police PPV. Trunk space, I got you. So if you're wondering how you're gonna bring your kids to the soccer game, football game, baseball game, whatever, look no further. Also, think of all the room you can fit, your groceries and spare engine parts for other cars, because this is a, a GM engine. You're not gonna break down in it. Now getting out is the hard part. So there's a couple things that really drove me towards this particular Zeta platform. One, other Zeta platforms running the same type of performance, like the Camaro, are gonna run you around $25,000. And oh, that's not really a budget-friendly car. And these guys, sure, they run between rough condition $5,000 to $15,000 for like a peak specific color, really hard to find, but you're probably gonna spend around nine dollars to $10,000. The other thing is I can fit all three kids in there. That's really good too. The crown and jewel is the engine. This is an LS engine. I know I can already hear some of you nerds out there going, uh, actually, it's an L77. Listen, just pound sand, no one cares. It's an LS engine, right? It's basically an LS2 block with a set of LS3 heads. And it has the AFM, which we will be deleting and putting a mild cam in because, well, let's all face it, the AFM is trash. And if you're worried about fuel economy, I don't know, buy a minivan. I don't know what else to tell you. But the really cool thing is with the 823 heads, we can do this. This is the Edelbrock Cross Ram. This thing right here and its glorious bell-like monstrosity is gonna allow us to put twin turbos in it. <laughs> Guys, just look at it. It's just the most beautiful thing since sliced bread and pizza, you know? So I can hear some of you guys thinking, but does it do a donut? Guys, it's a cop car, which means it's got cop tires, cop suspension, and most important, a prerequisite of doing donuts. All right, I'm a bit distracted because the mail carrier just showed up and handed me a package. Now, why that's kind of crazy is it's a Sunday. Do they ever go home? I don't know. Anyways, big shout out to whoever sent this t-shirt. Right here says, car guy, noun. Just like a regular guy, only cooler. See also, all knowing about cars and ridiculously good looking. Well, thank you very much, whoever sent that to me. I'll take that as a compliment. Also, if you're interested in sending something like a t-shirt or you know, maybe a sticker from your YouTube channel, or anything else, PO Box 7 Averill Park, New York. Attention, crazy car guy, Lunar Outlaw. Thank you very much. Now let's go ahead and take this car for a ride. So one of the really cool things about this car, overall, you have to think about it like this. It is obviously a cop car, but it didn't start out its life as that. It started out as a Commodore down in Australia. Not only is it a great family sedan, but you have enough power to roast the tires off. Kind of like what we used to build back in the 60s. It kind of has that 60s not quite muscle car because again four doors four door means you can fit more car seats but it's got everything else that you would need all right guys we're about to go find out just how quick the caprice is we have a bone stock one here and uh ac is running we should probably turn that off first test and tune of the year guys heck yeah so we're gonna have a discussion how you want to do a burnout with an automatic car. Now, contrary to popular belief, you should not neutral drop it. That's how you f it up. Now, what you're going to want to do is you want to put it into your lowest gear, which we're not going to do right now because we are in the staging lane. And then, you want to make sure all your traction control crap is off. 
you're gonna load up onto the converter and you're gonna give it gas. Now you're not gonna floor it, right? You wanna kinda keep it within its torque range. Each car is different. I'm gonna keep this thing because it's a big old V8 in the lower end, probably somewhere around three to 4,000 RPMs, maybe five, and it will be perfectly okay. That's how you're gonna wanna do it. Don't neutral drop, boys and girls. That's how you fuck up your transmission. I know I, I freaking slept. I saw the, I slept at it. Now I estimated that this car will run a 14 second pass. And let's see, my reaction time, which was terrible, horrible, 0.64, like horrible, garbage reaction time. I saw the light turn and I wasn't even on the gas yet. We ran 14.081 at 101.53. That is not shabby for a bone stock car, guys. And I will stand by that this is a great car that you can throw your car seats in the back of, bring your kids to school, you can bring them to the track, take the car seats out, and then have some fun. Guys, that was awesome. I gotta say, I was really, I had a lot of fun at the track and I'm looking forward to seeing what else we could do with this thing. But at the end of the day, like a 14 second pass at a full size car with four doors and 4,100 pounds. Guys, that's awesome. Like the consistency too. Mind you, like I'm, I'm used to driving the Supra, which is a manual transmission and getting consistent is, is pretty difficult with that. Our first launch was pretty rough at, I think we, we managed to sleep and then wake up and have breakfast at a reaction time of 0.6 something, which honestly, if your reaction time's that slow, uh, focus on that before everything else. You can definitely learn to go quicker. I, I'm not saying give up, like that is a slow reaction time. Our second pass, I ran exactly at the same time as I would launched with the actual Supra. Now, I don't know if it's because it's an automatic transmission versus a manual. I'm, I'm definitely a novice at this, um, but I'm saying that's probably why. So we loaded the torque converter at approximately 2,500, 3,000 RPM, somewhere in between there, and uh, we went. So we went on the third light. As soon as the third light hit, we went, and that was 0.18, which is still slow but not bad, getting better. So, uh, all right, we'll cut the light a little bit more. Halfway through the yellow light, I was like, okay, gone. With a reaction time of 0 0.028. So cutting the light is definitely a very critical thing if you're gonna be running something like that, especially say you're gonna hit and do some bracket racing. Now I gotta say, the consistency of this car is incredible. So, <laughs> There's a few things I wanna do, but we don't wanna mess with the consistency, that's for sure. Uh, now, the last run, we did red light. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was like, can we get like a .00 something? And no, uh, we can't. <laughs> we could red light though at a point negative eight. So I launched at the beginning of the second light and I was way off. Uh, if you're gonna do a burnout, you're gonna do the burnout mode, switch over to your pursuit mode. And this thing launches great. I, I seriously, 
no issue with it hooking up whatsoever. Now we warmed the tires up a little bit beforehand, but yeah, no issues with this thing hooking up, even with street tires on it, hard street tires with a lot of air in them. So uh, does it need more power? Yes. Are we gonna put more power in it? Absolutely. But if you guys are looking for something you can just hop in and have fun, look no further guys. Till next time, keep your shiny side up. God bless.